Good morning. Again, we'll open up with a statement, opening statement from coach, then we will field questions to the student athletes. We'll then dismiss the student athletes and then open up questions for coach. I don't have an opening okay. statement, so let's do it. All right, let's go straight to the questions for the student athletes. Michael Cobble, WBRZ TV in Baton Rouge for Alexis. Uh, just Georgia, I'm sure you saw her game, the game that she plays, you know, commanding that team. I guess just from a guard's perspective, what kind of matchup is she? Um, she's a great player. Um, what kind of player am I? It's going to be a good matchup. Bill Klein, Peter, for, from the uh, Advocate in Baton Rouge, just for both players. Uh, would you talk about the last four days and, and the uh, gamut of your emotions uh, and how this is different from just being in the NCAA tournament, being at the Final Four? Um, I was just telling my teammates, I don't think it has hit me yet that I'm actually in the Final Four. I, I just, I don't know, I was like, it's just like another game, another tournament, but like I'm actually in the Final Four. And I, I don't realize how big this is just yet. Maybe when I see the arena tomorrow, I mean, yeah, tomorrow and like get to the game, but like, I'm excited. Like we're trying to keep our emotions down, of course, because this is a lot of our first time, but just being able to stay focused. We've been really focused on scout these last four days. So just being able to do what we've been doing all year. What Andrew said. For Angel, this is Lauren from Bally Sports. You have a lot of young fans, girls and boys who look up to you. I'm just curious how you prepare yourself to show up on big stages like this, but also all throughout the NCAA tournament, how you show up for your team, obviously, but also for the young young ballers. Um, kind of, I'm at a point where everything I do is being watched. So just trying to be a leader and just trying to influence the youth. Um, I've always had people when I, was young, when I was younger that I could look up to and just being able to be that person when they get older and have that picture. I don't know if you saw the picture of me and Simone um, when I was young, like seven or eight, and she was in the WNBA. So hopefully one day I can remake that picture with someone. So I never know the impact on somebody's life and how somebody's day is going. So I just try to inspire as much as I can. Mark uh, Berman, The Roanoke Times. Uh, Angel, uh, I was curious, what's been the key for you this season that I'm sure even though most opponents, you know, the number one goal is to kind of keep you off the glass and keep you from getting second chance uh, shots, you're still able to do it? Um, just focusing on finishing around the basket. I think coming to LSU, I've gotten in way better shape and I've gotten much stronger. So just being able to, I think that has helped me a lot. And I haven't been in foul trouble until like these last few games um, all season. So just trying to stay together. And I think my teammates and coaches have putting me in a really good position where they give me the ball a lot. And also just whenever they miss a shot, I try to get the rebound as best as I can. To your right. Uh, Gabby Bream, her hoop stats. This is for both players. Angel, you mentioned you guys are really focused on the scout. I just wanted to know what types of information is most useful to you from the scouting report. Um, personnel just paying attention to your player that you'll be guarding or players that you'll potentially be guarding, knowing their tendencies, knowing their positive and negatives, just knowing their strengths and weaknesses. So I think that's just important within the season. And right now, I mean, you can look at the conference, you can look at out of conference, but then you can look at NCAA and how they're performing right now. So just being able to pay attention to that right now. I would agree personnel is most important, just knowing their tendencies and, you know, the team tendencies, you know, their offense, their defense, just the details of small things, sweating the small things. Oh, we have paper. We have, we have paper Both. scout and then film. So, yeah. Both. Both, yeah. yeah. Chessa Boucher with WVLA in Baton Rouge. Lex, back in your home state also. How you feeling, but where's your cowboy hat? I know, right? I was like, um, when I seen Coach Moki coming down the stairs with her cowboy hat, I was like, man, I wanted to wear mine. I forgot to put it on. But I'm super excited. Um, I've changed my goal now. I'm in Dallas. Now I want to have my senior night on Sunday. So um, my focus has shifted, and I hope my team, I know my team focus is, is, this, is, a, is, is, is the same as mine. Sorry. I don't know if I'm supposed to go. Good. Um, same for Alexis. Um, you have kind of been a part of the point guard position, changing, scoring, being able to pass the ball. I'm curious of what you look for in games in regards to when you need to go get yours and when it's best to get other people involved. It kind of starts in film, just knowing the type of team we're going to be facing. 
and just getting a feel for the game, like through the course of the game, and just being able, just being cognizant of when it's time for me to go score the ball and when I do need to pass the ball and be poised. I just gotta like, it's always it's just it's based on a feel for what my team need at that time. And then I'm listening to Coach Moki, what she needs me to do for the team. Um, but I don't know if you know, I've always been a point guard my whole life. So this is just my natural position and what I'm used to doing. So, yeah. Hey ladies, Corey Diaz uh, with the USA Today Network. Uh, I saw a report last night, and want to get both of your guys' thoughts on it, um, where walk up to the door, standing room tickets for the women's Final Four is more expensive than uh, the men's tournament in Houston. Just as a player uh, in women's basketball right now, uh, how big is that? And why is it important for people to know that this show is just as valuable as, as elsewhere? I mean, it's exciting. I'm, I'm happy. I mean, the tickets are expensive, and it's, it's tough probably on us because we can't get that many tickets. So it's, it's, it's the good and the bad, of course, but I'm happy the, the women's game is growing to be able to see that many people come into our games. And honestly, when I came to LSU, I knew what it was going to be. We get 15,000 fans coming to the game, sometimes even just on an off night. So just being able to see that the game is growing like this and in the final four again in the first time, I'm just excited and I'm excited to see all the people that are coming tomorrow. I think the most exciting part about it is being a part of history. And we're literally watching the game grow and change right in front of our faces. And we're playing a, um, a huge part in it. And it's just like, it's, it's an honor, it's an honor. And I'm just super excited to, you know, be a part of it. I'm watching Angel, like Angel's one of the main faces, and it's just like inspiring as well. Skyler Dixon with the AP Angel uh, down here. Sorry. Oh, sorry, it's like a movie theater right here in the front. <laughs> um, the matchup with Liz is gonna, people are going to be talking a lot about that. How do you balance trying to put your imprint on a game like this, but not try to do too much to win a matchup like that? Yeah, no, it's never about a matchup. It's all a team effort. So we're going to take her as anybody, other post player that we played all year. I mean, we played South Carolina as well. So just being able to play attention to detail, like I said, on, on scout, knowing her tendencies, the positive and the negative. So all together, we're going to have to take care of her, but not just her. They're also a great team. They play together as a great team. So I don't think they can just win with, with just her. I think we have to take care of business, all five positions, and everybody has to guard the ball. Up to the front, yes. Yeah, um, M.A. Vopel from ESPN.com. Um, Angel and Alexis, if you guys both um, want to answer this, you, you guys obviously saw Simone's statue go up outside the arena. Uh, you guys have been part of this, I don't know, resurrection, maybe, maybe too strong a word, but you know what I mean, the, the rebuilding of LSU. What does it mean to you to be part of that and the feeling you're getting from these longtime LSU fans who remember the Sylvia Fowles days and the Simone Augustus days that – that they're able to experience this again with you guys? I mean, yeah, when I came to LSU, I kind of told Coach I wanted to bring this program back to where it was. And then on top of that, having Coach Bob Starkey, he was already here with them when they when they had been on that run, that Final Four run. So just being able to do it for the fans, I mean, they've waited a long time to see this, this, where, this program get to back to where they wanted to be. So just being able to do it for them and then making history again, like just coming back to what Alexis said. So I'm excited. When I was at Texas A&M, you know, I played for Coach Starkey. He would always tell me about LSU, his days at LSU. Like, he just loved LSU. And I was like, well, Coach, I think you should, you know, kind of go back home. Like, you, you love you love LSU. And I'm actually here now, and I can experience it. I feel what he was talking about when I was at Texas A&M. The fans, the history, it's like a marathon, like, and it's just so like exciting to be a part of it and to be a part of the rebuild. And you know, I came, to, I came, I joined, rejoined Coach Moki to rebuild the program. So it's just, it's just an amazing feeling. Angel, staying right here in the front. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, making Lover KTC in Lafayette. Um, two quick ones for you. You talked about Alexis. You know, being this a homecoming for her. Obviously, you want to. You, this is a full team effort, but the homecoming for her, Samaya, how much do you want it for them? And then my second one, we talked about the underdog role just about all season. How much does that motivate you? Yeah, so the first question, I mean, of course I want to do it for my Texas girls coming back home. It's no better home, place than home. So being able to first do it for the seniors, I mean, this is their last time 
being able to play. These, these could be their last two final games of their college career. So just being able to go out with a bang. I told Alexis that we were going get to get to Dallas. So now she has a new goal is to get to Sunday. So just being able to do it for them and then just playing that underdog role, I think that has got us to where we are right now. All year, our non-conference schedule was weak. The SEC was weak, and we're here now. So just being able to be humble and just staying, staying down, I think that's what Coach has emphasized on all year. Play the underdog, play the underdog role. Because when you do beat them, it's just like, oh, oh, okay. We believe in each other in the locker room, and as long as we got each other, we'll go as far as we can. Uh, Matthew Bruni, Bruni with on three. Uh, Alexis, how important has Kateri Poole been over the past three, four games in this tournament run, and how do you expect her to, to perform on this week? Kateri has, Kateri has been a key success, I mean, a, 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 good, a key piece to our success. She's um, taking on every role that coach has asked her to be, whether it's her being a point guard position, a defensive stopper, um, whatever it is, she's just been, a, she's been coachable and willing to do whatever the team needs. And it also helps me just having another, being confident in another guard with experience. I mean, she's been amazing. She's been a, a great piece to our puzzle. To your left. Chess Boucher, WVLA. Angel, what have you seen from Lex knowing that this is her home state? This is, she's shifted her focus now, and this is, I mean, could potentially be it for her with you at LSU. I mean, I know Lex has been on a journey, and it's no better place than finishing at home. So I know this is exciting for her. Um, I'm happy for her that she never gave up, and being able to be in this moment where she's just, she has rise. I know she's not done yet, but just to see how much she has grown throughout the season and her maturity, it's been amazing. So being able to do it with just not just for Alexis, but all the Texas girls that were able to come back home. I know Samaya, we went to DeSoto yesterday, being able to play at her court. So I think it's just really fun for all of us. Amanda Kristovich from Front Office Sports. Um, Angel, you're obviously at the top of the women's game on the court, but also with NIL deals. How have you been balancing um, being at the top, both on and <laughs> off the court, and pr like particularly during the tournament? It's been a lot. Um, I kind of set myself to only post in certain days, and today, this before 12, is the last time I'll be posting. So. Just trying to have a schedule of everything going on because social media has taken over. And, I mean, NIO is just what, what, what the game has come to. So it, it is hard and stressful. But the lady I work with, Janine, she has been amazing and has helped me through a lot of this stuff. So shout out to her. But it's hard. It's hard. We're going to take our final two questions for the student athletes right here on our left. Yeah, for either of you. Uh, what have you liked about how your team has been playing defensively lately that you want to replicate and, and uh, recapture tomorrow? And then offensively, is there any areas of improvement you're looking to build upon from, from the Miami game? Let's start with Alexis. Um, as far as defense, I think we're playing pretty solid defense right now. We're all on one accord. We're clicking. We're talking. We're communicating. But our offense, we haven't shot the ball well, and that's obviously a goal. You know, we haven't put on a bit our best showcase yet, and it's going to be key these last two games or for our next game on Friday that we come together, you know, and play a complete game. But we're not we're not stressing the offense. You know, that's going to come. But long as the only thing we can't control is our defense. And Angel. Oh, yeah. Same thing Alexis said. I mean, I know if we can't make, make shots, we'll play defense. And I think that's just something that we've emphasized on. I don't know. We've had a handful of games where we, where we pulled a full game together offensively and defensively where we shot well, and we're here. So luckily we get it to see another day. As long as you get to see another day, and we get to see tomorrow and have that opportunity to play again. So I'm just excited. And our last question up here in the front. Um, yes, for both ladies. I know LSU's been to this final four or five different times, but never gotten to the championships. Kim obviously has. Has she told you that anything changes when you get here? Anything to be prepared for? Anything to take that next step? It's when to go home. I mean, the teams that stay together, the teams that fight together, the teams that just are focused, those are the teams that excel to the championship game. And she's been to championship games, and she has won championship games. So she even told us in the C16 game, she said, y'all get us to the Elite Eight, we can get you to the Final Four. So now it's, you get us to that, you, you win this game, you get, I'll get you to the championship and win that championship. So just trusting in the coaches. Of course, they've been here before and just, just trying to believe as much as we can. What Angel said, but I'm also going to say, I think all four teams here are great teams. We're all good teams. We wouldn't be in the Final Four if we weren't. But I think 
the teams who've made it to this point were the mental tough teams, and the team who's going to be the last one standing will be – it'll be based on who can be the, the, more, the more mental tough team. And it's going to be based off who can fight through adversity, who can fight through bad calls, who can fight through physicality. It's going to come down to the little things. And, you know, we, we've been preparing for, this, for these moments. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. At this time, we'll open up it for questions for Coach. We'll start here over with Doug. Morning, Coach. Doug Feinberg, the AP. How much does experience play into the Final Four? I mean, you've been here many times with other teams. Virginia Tech is their first time. How much does that help dealing with not just on the court, but media, all the other events that go into the Final Four besides actually what happens on the court for an hour and a half? Well, Doug, I'm the only one in our locker room that has done this, but I'm not going to shoot, dribble, pass, guard any of them. So it's not a matter of what I have done. I look at it this way. It may be their first time to be in this situation, but they're all seniors. They're all seniors. It's the first time for my group to be in this situation as well, and we're not all seniors. So I think they have the edge on experience. Uh, all I'm going to do is tweak a thing here or there throughout the course of the game, but um, it has nothing at all to do with coaching and how long a coach has been somewhere or how many times a coach has been somewhere. Uh, Ricardo LeCompte, WDO TV in New Orleans. Uh, I just want to shift gears real quick, just kind of talking about uh, you've mentioned Tickball so many times where you've grown up. Um, is there one or two memories, uh, athletic memories, that you could probably share with us, whether it was you know, playing pickup games in that gym uh, at the middle school or why you had your nickname Spark Plug um, playing? And two, is it more satisfying for this Final Four run since the connection you have, basically essentially doing it in your own backyard? Um, there are lots of memories when you're growing up that are impactful. I think Dixie Youth Baseball was a big impactful moment in my life when I was kicked out of a dugout because I was a girl and it was the all-star game and I uh, couldn't even sit in the dugout. The impact of that I won't ever forget. Uh, growing up, uh, going to the gyms down Highway 51 in Tanchpaho Parish, uh, playing on Sunday nights uh, with older guys and my dad, they let me play. Um, but uh, memories are all we have in life until they're gone. Uh, coming back to Louisiana uh, was easy. Uh, the only thing different is all my family and friends were fatter, were older, were more wrinkled. We have more gray. Uh, the second part of your question, it's ironic kind of that um, in two years uh, at LSU, my LSU team is in a Final Four in a state that was very good to me, uh, not far from an institution that was very good to me. And uh, I would imagine there are going to be lots of Baylor people sitting in our section. Uh, I just had breakfast with Odyssey Sims, one of the greatest to play here. I've been on the phone with lots of former players. Um, when before we walked up down these stairs, I said, oh, nothing's changed. We're going to go down these deep stairs that are real narrow. A uh, lot of wonderful memories. Coach, we're going to go to your right. Amanda Kristovich from Front Office Sports. Um, over the past several years, obviously, the women's Final Four has grown so much. Um, in your opinion, what would you like to see the NCAA do to continue to grow it, to make it even bigger? Oh, I'm not smart enough to give you those answers right now. I've seen uh, things I agree with through the years, and I've seen things I don't agree with. Um, but I can't invest much time in all of that. I just try to coach basketball. I'll give opinions, certainly. Uh, but um, yeah, it's pretty neat that uh, it's sold out. The cheapest ticket is more expensive than the cheapest ticket in Houston for the men's Final Four. I thought that was eye-catching. Um, and Angel's right. These young ladies and their Families have to sit up high. I would like to see their families be allowed to sit down low and buy those tickets or save a section for the families where they can go hug their families afterwards. And the way it's set up now is you only get a certain allotment of tickets and their families usually are not close to the court. And uh, 
what is it, $325, I think I was told, for them to go buy extra tickets for everybody because they're only allotted so many tickets. Maybe those are things that would I'd come to mind right off the top of my head. Hey, Coach, we're going to go to your left, please. Hey, Coach, Robbie Fueling, Spectrum News 1 in Dallas. Uh, just going off of what you said earlier, just about all the Baylor fans just you know cheering you on personally, um, I spoke to one of your first point guards at Baylor, Nicole Collins. She's now one of the high school coaches out here at Cedar Hill. Um, can you just talk about just the relationship you have with your former players and how special that is just to keep in contact after all these years? Well, first of all, let me make it clear. You're not in contact with all your former players. Some don't like you. And then you've got those that you stay in contact with. Those that don't like you, it's usually one of three reasons. You either had to discipline them really hard dismiss them or they didn't get enough playing time. But you hope that when your career is over that, you know, you have more that love you and like you and appreciate you than don't. And I think as I tell them all the time, college are the greatest years of your life, period. They're the greatest years of your life. You're not paying bills. You're not changing diapers usually. Uh, you're just getting to, to do what everybody would love to do, go to school for free and play basketball. Nicole, I inherited at Baylor. She was one of my, if not, well, she and Sheila Lambert were my two guards. Uh, so proud of her. She's been able to go to state championships in the state of Texas, um, and it's going to be good to see them. I'll have some of them out on the court here in a minute that were on the very first 2005 national championship team. Uh, that's why you coach. You coach to impact lives, and you may not realize it as a student athlete, the impact a coach has until 10, 20, and 30 years down the road. Coach, to your right. Uh, Gabe, you her hoop stats. Congrats on getting back here, Coach. Um, so I have kind of two questions about scouting. Uh, what's the inputs that are most useful for you? Is it film on common opponents, opponents you think resemble you know, Virginia Tech? or just the most recent tape? And then what's the process of getting that down to the players in kind of sound bites that they can use on court? A lot of our film sessions are done together, first of all. Throughout the course of the year, we will do individual uh, clips of people they will guard and send to them individually. Bob Starkey, my associate head coach, is a film junkie. I have to basically run him out of the room. <coughs> I'm more of, I want to see the most recent films. I want to share the most recent films with our team. Um, does that answer it? All right. To your left again, coach. Over here, Matthew Bruni with on three. Um, what makes Georgia Amor such a tough guard to defend and how do you decide what kind of matchups you want to throw at her with the variety of guards you have? Well, her range is unlimited. Uh, you could put her in the uh, category like Caitlin Clark. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, after Clark, you probably have her as the second or third most three-point shot attempts in the country. Uh, she has an unbelievable step-back move that takes her either even further away from the three-point line. Uh, she gets her teammates involved. Uh, they use Kitley in such a way where she's not just a back-to-the-basket big girl. She can face you up. She can put it on the floor. They push the ball extremely well in transition. You have to fan out and not get caught and sucked in into the paint. Um, she's just, from the time I saw her in the bubble till now, whew, somebody has done some tremendous work with her. Coach, we're going to go to your back um, in the right corner. Hi, uh, uh, Coach Smokey. I'm Bill Roden with ESPN Landscape. Uh, congratulations about everything. Thank you. Um, just curious, you, you just referenced a little while ago about being in the dugout, being kicked out of the dugout. So you've experienced in your career being kicked out, being left out. Uh, my question now, there's this tug of war with tra transgender athletes. Um, has you being uh, kept out informed how you feel about this new tug of war about transgender athletes? Do you see this kind of being worked out in the next 5, 10, 15 years? I, I, I hope I answer this in a very sensitive way because um, I think we all know transgenders. I think we all know people who may not, may not be like we are. Um, I, I had a conversation with Debbie Antonelli. She has a special needs child. And we found the Special Olympics for them, didn't we? 
We found a place for them to compete. And I think that with time, maybe you will see a league or something for transgender um, athletes. I just think that I'm sensitive to those on one side, and yet I'm also sensitive to those on the other side. Does that make sense? Is that a good politically correct answer so I don't get in trouble? Huh? Uh, I'm sorry, what was it? You're going to find this extremely interesting. When this topic became apparent, when I was at Baylor, I had that conversation with the athletic director. And I'll leave it at that. So I was kind of ahead of the curve. I had a conversation. What if? I never got an answer. And I'll leave it at that. But I was very much aware. Uh, but I also want you to know that I have conversations with transgender people who don't believe that they should be competing against biological females. And I find that real interesting. Uh, so you, you ask questions. You're, you're human. You want to hear sides of stories and, and come up with what you think. But at the end of the day, um, nobody cares what I think. <laughs> Nobody cares, but thanks for asking that. Coach, we're gonna to move to your left. Scott Rapalé with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Kim, uh, making this move uh, as you did to a new school in this era with the, the transfer portal and NIL, all the, all the challenges that didn't exist when you started coaching, how, how difficult has that been? How has it, and what's been invigorating about making this move to try to rebuild a program Maybe it's a little different from building from nothing, basically, at Baylor, but what is, how has that been for you personally? Well, Scott, it's, it's energized me um, to go back home, to see familiar faces, and know that those people will now buy season tickets just because they know me. What I didn't know would happen so quickly was the transfer portal and the number of student athletes I would get in the portal. I don't deal with NIL. I don't deal with um, all of that because it's too much. I don't even have social media. If somebody tells me something's on social media, they will have to send it to me. So what I did, if you'll remember, I put one of our assistants in charge and she got a new title to work with the NIL department in athletics at LSU because I don't want to learn all that. I don't want to know. I have no clue what Angel and Flage, I don't know who they have deals with. I don't want to know. All I care about is that it doesn't affect anything in that locker room, and it doesn't. They share whatever things they get from their, um, um, you call it sponsors or their NIL people, they share it with their teammates. They give out purses and headphones and all kinds of stuff. I don't have a clue. Now, you also have to know there is that component of each institution has the collective now where student athletes within the athletic department and have those donors. I don't deal with that either. That's someone on my staff. Don't want to don't want to deal with it. It's too much. I just want to coach, but it's here to stay. So we better embrace it. Go back to uh, when it started. LSU may have been the first big time institution that embraced NIL and it was all over Times Square and it was NILSU if you remember. Olivia Dunn, our gymnast, was all over Times Square and the big, you know, screens. So kudos to LSU for being um, proactive because I think it's here to stay. Uh, Berman, the uh, Roanoke Times, uh, having played Virginia Tech two years ago, uh, as you prepare for him this week, are there certain, in certain ways you found Tech to be a, a tougher challenge this time around or a, a different kind of challenge this time around to prepare for? Well, heck yeah. I just told you. They're all seniors. They, they're they're battle-tested. Um, now, I don't have the same team uh, that I had at Baylor, uh, so you can't compare that. But... They're seniors, they're experienced, they're on a roll, they're confident. They've been together a while now. He's a great coach, love him to death. Um, sure, they'll be nervous, but my team will be nervous too because they're all doing it. Both teams will be doing it for the first time. We're going to come up to the front, M.A. Yeah, um, M.A. Vopel, ESPN.com. Um, 
Coach, can you talk a little bit about how Angel's been successful against all different types of defenses? And I know you said earlier, obviously, Kitley is not just a low block player, but she's big. Um, how Angel operates against those types of players versus maybe other types of defenses? Right. Well, first of all, I don't know that Kitley will be guarding Angel. Uh, and nobody knows if Angel will be guarding Kitley. Um, Angel has been double team. She is outstanding at passing out of the double team and finding the open player. She has been guarded one-on-one -on -one by the bigger player. Angel is not a true back-to-the-basket player. She likes to take you off the dribble. Sometimes she tries to do too much, um, and I just tell her to relax. We'll find you on ball reversal. Um, I don't think Virginia Tech is the Kitley show or the Angel show. There's too many weapons around them. Uh, but Angel figures out a way to get in there and battle rebounding. She gets a lot of her own misses, um, and she just is strong. She's very, very strong. And uh, sometimes I forget how big Angel is until you stand next to her. She's a little bit bigger than you realize. Uh, but it, it's not anything she hasn't seen. We know Kitley's going to block shots. She should. But it doesn't mean that we're going to change our approach on the offensive end because of, of size. Coach, to your left, we're going to take our final set of questions. Uh, Chessa Boucher with WVLA in Baton Rouge. Coach Mulkey, Lex said that she has shifted her focus. Maybe the games that we've seen from Lex, she doesn't shoot well. She really is able to clamp down defensively. What have you seen from her, and especially knowing the guard play that you guys will face against Virginia Tech? Alexis can hit big shots. She may go over for a while, but shoot it again, and she's going to hit the big three. Her speed and quickness is just an asset. She can get through screens, under screens, up screens. She, can just, she just has that quickness about her. Uh, the latter part of your question was, Well, she's faced a lot of great ones, so let's, let's give some little props here to the SEC. Uh, there's a lot of great players in the SEC. There's a lot of great guards in the SEC. Uh, I don't think that she takes the approach. I think that's probably, I'm not going to answer for her, but probably why she was short with your question a while ago because she feels like she's good too. And uh, it, it's going to be a great matchup. I don't know that great players ever stop each other. They're all going to get what they need to get for their teams to be successful. I think always it's going to end up being somebody that's the unsung hero. Right up here in the front. Hey, Kim. Corey Diaz with the USA Today Network. Two questions for you. Two weekends ago, as a true freshman, Flage comes out and has the kind of performance that she has on the biggest stage for her up to that point. Is that still yeah, on the final four stage, is that still your expectation of how she will be able to em sort of embrace the atmosphere and, and be able to perform? And then, too, is, is the hat a, a win in Rome type situation? The hat? You? Okay, well, the Flage question is, let's go back to the South Carolina game earlier this year. Um, I think Flage would sit here and go, what a learning experience. And if you know Flage, that child outworks anybody probably that I've ever coached. She never sleeps. She leaves practice and goes and starts doing rap stuff. And since the South Carolina game, I have seen little things improve in practice. I'm talking about on the floor, but in practice that she took to heart. If I had to just say the difference between the big stage tomorrow and that big stage at South Carolina, I'm going to go back to the experience factor. Virginia Tech hasn't been where South Carolina has been. Even though they're seniors, I have to think they're going to have nerves just like Flaget may have nerves. Whereas when you're playing on the court where South Carolina's got 18,000 people, you're comfortable. So I hope that if Flaget has that moment again tomorrow, that maybe Virginia Tech We'll have those moments too, and it won't be such a dominating performance by the opponent like South Carolina was. I mean, from the tip they scored when we played South Carolina. The hat, they gave us these hats, and I was looking for some cowboy boots. Uh, they didn't have that, but you know, I love country music, 
and I just thought it was appropriate. I was gonna come in here and sing, all my exes live in Texas, which is true. I only have one though. I've only been married once. But then I'm gonna end it with this. There's an old, I'm the happiest girl in the whole USA. Who sang that? Them. Vopal, tell them, baby. Y'all have a good day. You got one more question, Coach. Oh, one more. Too. That was one more. I promise. This was the last one. <laughs> See? Can't trust the media. They said just two more questions. I said a few more oh, questions. Oh, okay. Got one, well, one what is a few? One. All right. <laughs> one more last one. Hey, Kim, it's Nancy Armour with USA Today. Sorry, that would have been a perfect ending. But um, you've talked about former players. You've talked about Baylor. So I have to ask, have you been... You don't have to ask. You choose to ask. I do, yes. But there it's you part go. of my job. Okay. Um, have you had any conversations or been in touch with BG since she was no. released? Okay. No. But I'm glad she's back. I'm glad she's safe. She's sound. I think everybody is. And uh, But no, I have not. Thank you, Coach. All right. As a reminder, a recording and written transcript of this press conference will be posted on NCAA Digital Media Hub at www.ncaa.veritone.com.